You told me my your army could protect my plutonium. One pilot stole most of it back and sank your subs like they were rubber rafts. It's beyond explaining. My gunships should have neutralized him before he even came near the transfer zone. He must not interfere any further. I want him to be obliterated, burned like the trash he is. I want the jungle vermin to feed on his charred remains. I will put my ground troops on high alert. If he dares to attack my camp, he will be greeted by a sky full of fire. Mm-hmm. Good to hear from you, Captain. Continue your progress inland. Unfortunately, the enemy has been tracking you on their radar, so most of the sector will be alerted to your presence. The headquarters here is a listening outpost for the drug lord. We will need to establish a wiretap to track his movements. The communication expert we sent in on this mission has been captured and is being held in a POW barrack. Rescue this expert and airlift him to his objective. Uh, then capture the enemy commanders to get their passcodes. Once the area is secure, recover the nuclear reactors. The madman is planning to make his weapons. Ooh, so welcome back to Jungle Strike, everybody. This is mission three, the training grounds. And this mission isn't actually too bad. Um, it... <sighs> This is the first mission in the game where supplies can be, I suppose you could say they're limited. Um, also, I was wrong about the Comanche. Its first flight was in, or its first fl test flight was in about two th uh, 1994, I think. So, a little bit older than I thought. But yes, it was cancelled in 2004, the project. Right, we want to come here first and grab the Quick Winch. Because this is the first mission where we can actually get the Quick Winch. Is the quick winch useful? Eh, not really, but we'll have it anyway. So our first mission is training camp. Enemy training grounds. Wipe out the enemy training camp. Eliminate any guard towers and troops you encounter. Tents may hold supplies. Yeah, we're gonna bust open pretty much everything we can. Fairly easy mission to start with. All these brown tents are going to be destroyed. Lots of enemy troops, but nothing too much to worry about. Kind of just standard riffraff, really. Not much use uh, against our Comanche, that's for sure. So let's go open up all these tents. It's like Christmas, isn't it? Start or a birthday party. They're actually quite hard to aim at. You have to kind of maneuver the Comanche into the right area because your guns don't auto lock onto these things. There's actually a lot of targets uh, on this game. Oh, I should say in this game that your helicopter doesn't auto target and you really don't want to destroy supplies if you can help it because as I said there's really not many of them and we do want to capture these guys if we can because uh, they're free armor at the end of the day now this is the first level that I guess can be a little bit challenging uh, if you don't know what you're doing there is only, to my knowledge, one extra life on this level. You can see just how hard it is to aim. It really is. You have to put that. Oh, hello. Put that jinking um, by holding down the A button really into good use here. Now we have to destroy these. Obviously, the guard towers. For some reason, <laughs> is the only part of the camp that we actually have to destroy. The tents don't matter for reasons. Um, but you don't actually have to destroy the entire lot. You only actually have to shoot the guys out of the towers, which is interesting. Uh, so there should be a tower here somewhere, but we've already destroyed it. Yeah, fuel is a big issue on this level. Everything else is not too bad, like ammo and there's that, even some armor pickups, uh, although it doesn't tell you where there's armor I don't think there's no option to look for armor but there are some armor pickups oh he just like wasted his own tower what a fool get in here all right not bad not bad so what we like fuel is already on 30 um, which isn't good if we have a look at fuel <sighs> yeah yep there really isn't that much available now why do I get the feel? Oh, okay, I was gonna say I was 
thought this was going to bug out then, which would have sucked. Now, there will be a few more fuel units to uncover somewhere, uh, hopefully. So I don't think that's all of it. Oh, there's some armor there, which is cool. We'll grab it, I guess. There we go. Not bad. Uh, so, next mission is the landing zone, because... Yeah, we'll come over here and we'll grab this fuel. Yeah, because... Um, we don't start with a landing zone. No, we actually have to take it over. And this is a bit of a bollock. As you can see, uh, we have our first new enemy of the level. We have Sheridan tanks. And they're also backed up by those little gun cars. Little gun cars aren't too much to worry about, but the Sheridan tanks, they sting. They really do. But anyway, we have to go over here and collect this green beret. Landing zone. Protected by enemy troops. Secure the enemy landing zone. You must clear the area, then airlift a green beret to defend the zone. Look for your man in the jungle clearing. Yeah. Not really sure uh, how one green beret is going to defend this area, but hey. I guess the defense budget was cut after all. Um, any other dudes around here? Yeah, it's you. Just all alone in the desert by yourself. Right, well, let's go take this place over and watch the flag. This is actually quite cool. <laughs> he switches it over to an American flag. I like that. Nice little bit of detail there. Oh, and the landing pad changes color as well. Nice. So, with that done, and our guns are severely depleted here, we are going to destroy the mobile radar. Early warning, mobile radar, MRX 254B. Knock out the three radar sites protecting the tank depot and barracks. These radar units are mobile, so they may be hard to track on your map. Uh, not really sure why it says that, because clearly they're not. They are absolutely very stationary. Um, <clears throat> I actually think there's a hidden one on this level. All right, these Sheridans really do hurt if you let them yeah as you can see they don't actually ever move at all and sometimes if you destroy the van it takes the radar as well yeah Sheridans don't move at all but we do get some blurb on those uh, Sheridan 23 millimeter cannon it's an Sheridans are speedy tough skinned beer moths they don't do exceptional damage but their rapid fire more than makes up for it yep so armor is 150 so they take a one two punch to take out and they do 30 points of damage. And look how many there are. Yes, there's a few of them, isn't there? One, two punch. Yeah, they're nothing to worry about. Uh, Sheridans are actually extremely old vehicles. I think they stopped making them in the 70s. Actually, 1970, they stopped making Sheridans. They're actually amphibious as well. So, ooh. Ooh. We actually tucked into an alert zone there, which is bad news. We want to try and stay away from those. And, oh God, hello. Enemies in alert zones have twice the armor and do twice the damage and fire twice as fast. So, yeah, they're bad news. Oh, there's a Sheridan up here as well. Let's go take him out. We're going to take them all out if we can, just because, depending on how our supplies last, that is. Hey, friend. Oh, are we really out of Hellfires? Yes, we are. Hellfires are going to run dry pretty quick on this level. Uh, Com expert. Okay, well, that's useful. Let's grab this. Oh, have you got anything in your tents for me, my friend? No. Stingy bastard. Uh, right, so let's go grab up our comm expert. Enemy barracks defended by guard towers. Rescue the communications expert from his barracks or barrack jail and airlift him to the telephone poles. He'll establish a wire tap to monitor the drug lord's calls. Yeah. Uh, not sure why um, the drug lord is going to stay here after we destroy this place, but hey. I wouldn't have thought we we're going to leave too much standing. So these are the barracks here. There are lots of them. We can destroy them. 
some of them have soldiers that we can actually capture and you know what we might as well capture them because they're worth free armor at the landing zone only problem on this level is the there's only one landing zone that we can actually use and it's quite far away but it's preferable oh, there's some armor there as well it's preferable to fly uh, quite far away from your objective to get some free repairs I suppose hey friend oh really dude really these things these gatling guns they are nasty ah oh, low fuel but that's quite convenient that's quite convenient indeed so we need to remember that there's some armor here for us if we need it also ah fucking sheridan really you're gone now there's actually a sheridan around here somewhere that has a extra life for us, which, well, ooh, looks like they take the one two punch as well. Good to know. Um, ooh. Yep, one two punch gets rid of them. So, Hellfires are starting to get uh, <laughs> um, quite a lot of use. One, two. Now, obviously, having so many extra. Uh, hydro rockets in this game over the first game is really useful. Ooh, there's our man. There we go. We found the communications expert. Now let's take him to the poles so he can establish the wiretap. Yes. We're also really low on armor, but that's okay. Uh, is it okay? Yeah. Ah, we want to crack that Sheridan open. Pretty sure he has a life for us. He does. Cheers, pal. Uh, suppose we can open up these last few barracks whilst we're here. Well, there's actually quite a few of these. Don't really want to open them all up. Oh, hello. We'll take you though. Okay, cool. Now let's head straight forwards. One rocket does take those guys out, which is nice. Oof, low armor. You know what? Low armor. Let's go grab that armor that we just uncovered because why not? You're gone. How much? <laughs> We've got 80 armor left. Yeah, that's that's really not a lot. That's three shots from a Sheridan and we'd be in bits. Now, as I said, there are loads of these barracks and I... Oh, God damn it really don't know if there's anything worthwhile in these I honestly can't remember I guess we can crack them open I mean there's troops that we can pick up but mm, we're just wasting ammo really uh, if we like I say if we really need the armor we can come back here later but we should be okay you're gonna have yeah I know some of these Sheridans actually drop um, ammo for us as well oh hello yeah we need to come back here later I'm not gonna waste this place just yet I do love that single rocket it just takes those out very efficient oh talking of fish efficiency I'm actually almost out of weapons and we're long fuel again because that is a running theme in this game. <sighs> there ain't really any fuel close by. Um, hopefully we can make it to this fuel. Yeah, this is the problem on this level. Fuel. We should just scrape by this one. Come on. There we go. That'll do. Yeah, that ca that was close. That was very close. I don't know if there's ever any fuel in these buildings. I'm not sure. I know, well, <laughs> we found armor in one of them, but as for armor and ammo. Now, unfortunately, today is the last day of my holiday. 
Let's just, oh god, we're out of ammo as well. Oh, shit. We're not doing so well. Let's go drop this guy off. We really are running out of ammo quite a lot. Yeah, last day of my holiday today, which, ugh, I tell you what, that pang of misery when you realise you've got to go back to work the next day. Ugh. Especially after having 11 days off. Right, good work, man, good work. I know, first world problems and all that. Uh, now, we need ammo. <sighs> Ammo's nowhere to be seen either. Ammo's all the way over here too. We really are just burning fuel. I'm sure there is ammo in this depot somewhere. Well, I ain't gonna be in there, that's for sure. Well, so what does it say about the Sheridan tank depot? Sheridan tank depot. Destroy the Sheridan tanks as they prepare for battle. Knock out these weapons before they become operational. Yeah, there's a few of them here. Only a couple of them actually are crude, which is convenient. Um, now, the ones that aren't crude are actually quite hard to hit. I know one of these has ammo. I know one of these, at least one of these has ammo. But it's just finding the one that does. Come on. Come on. I know one of you fuckers is loaded. Oh god, it's armoured car. There we go. Warning low armour. Ugh. That's our cue to bug out, I guess. Let's go drop these guys off, go get patched up, and then get back into the fight. Oh, a sh that guy, I know that Sheridan has armor. I know he does. Let's go rearm and uh, get patched up. Right, so from here, where's the closest ammo? I guess we could go to the jungle, I suppose. Drop these guys off. Now, you can only get um, 600 points of armor maximum. Because, remember, uh, each guy we drop off gives us six, uh, 100 points of armor. We can carry six soldiers. Now, oh, Jesus. If you contrast that to the original, uh, that would fully uh, repair your helicopter. Because you only had 600 points of armor. Now, in this game, of course, we only have... Uh, we have a thousand armor, but um, <laughs> it doesn't feel like your helicopter's that much stronger. And we're almost out of fuel again. Hmm. Well, whilst we're here, let's destroy this. Just whilst we're here. There we go. That leaves one radar left. And there's a Sheridan here. We're going to take him out now as well. Because fuck that guy. And you two. Fuck off. Get the fuck out of here. Uh, right, back to the depot. Can't believe we're almost out of fuel again. Jesus. This is not an efficient helicopter at all. Imagine how much this would cost to keep in the air. Maybe that's oh, low fuel. Maybe that's why they were scrapped. All right, let's bug out and grab some go juice. We should be able to find some fuel a little bit later on. Um, I mean, we are mostly through this mission now, anyway. But there we go. Fully loaded. <laughs> I love that. You push start to check out your uh, inventory. And we're already uh, <laughs> quite far out of fuel. Well, we've already used four units of fuel. Uh, we've literally had it like less than 30 seconds. Get on board, you son of a bitch. You're gone. Who's left? You. There's no point wasting good missiles on this guy. There we go. Mission complete. Alright, get in there. Get here, you dickhead. Oh, hey, friend. Boom. Good night. Okay, so what's left? Mobile radar 2. Yep, so this is basically the same thing, but uh, the radar units protecting the enemy HQ and warehouse. This will provide you with undetected uh, access to these two areas. Yeah, kind of a lie. I actually 
think there is a, a radar site that doesn't appear on your map that's hidden. I'm sure there's a fourth one. Because, yeah. Oof. This is a alert zone, as you can see. As you can see. That really hurts. Right, he's gone. Let's destroy this van as well. They don't need the van, do they? Right, good enough. Now this guy's chilled out a little bit. Good night. Now we have to go all the way back to the HQ. Yeah, this is where you really do burn a lot of fuel. This to and froing. But hey, that's the way the cookie crumbles. Uh, ooh, what we could do, I guess. Let's go all the way back to base and grab that last fuel that's uh, at the base. What we like weapon wise. Uh, no, I don't think we're going to need to. I don't think we're going to need to. That's just wasting time, really. Not that we're, well, I was going to say, not that we're on a time limit, but uh, yeah, actually we are. With, with my imminent return back to work. See what I mean? This is apparently still an alert zone. I don't know why this is an alert zone. And I really didn't want to pick that fuel up. Now we might be in trouble because we've just picked up fuel that we really didn't need. But, god damn it. Just have to keep an eye on the fuel. Come on. Come on. Come on. There we go. Right. Got ammo there, which is nice. There's a bloody AA gun there. Alright. There we go. There's armor there, interestingly enough. Oh, I can't believe we picked up that bloody ammo. Oh, that bloody fuel. That's really, really annoying. Oh well, let's grab the ammo whilst we're here. No point crying about it, I guess. Let's grab the armor too. Sure, why not? Oh, yeah, very, very tight on resources on this level. Ooh, Jesus, I don't actually think they do that much damage. Um, otherwise, we'd have been shredded a minute ago. I mean, don't get me wrong, they do enough damage, <laughs> but uh, yeah, All right, come here. Okay, this commander gave me his radio password. He claims that it is right. Uh, that's actually kind of important, I guess. We go for a print screen. I think if you punch that in, uh, that actually gives you um, extra lives. Uh, so if we put that password in the password screen, it lets us play through the game with 10 lives on each level, I believe. It's something like that. So, oh, we didn't even read that. Field Training Headquarters. Destroy the training HQ. The hostile forces uh, receive their orders from the station. Capture the three field commanders to get their radio passwords. Yeah, well, we've got them now. Now our final mission, if we choose to accept it, and we are going to choose to accept it because we have no choice. 62% fuel. Um, yeah, we're going to have to go grab it. Because we're not going to have enough fuel otherwise. God damn it. We actually might struggle <laughs> with fuel here. Mm. But anyway, the mission we're on now is the last one nuke reactor so weapons storage warehouse retrieve the nuclear reactor from the enemy warehouse to watch <coughs> or watch for ground troops inside do not destroy this reactor it must be returned safely yeah we'll be fine i think i'm sure right yeah, see, 50% fuel. We're going to be on like 46% fuel by the time we pick this up. 
So yeah, we've got one load of fuel. So we have to get there, complete the mission. Uh, yeah, we should be fine. Fuel is a huge problem in this. Now, I believe in the Mega Drive, not the Mega Drive, the Super Nintendo version of this game, uh, you actually ran out of fuel quicker, if you can believe that. Um, I remember there was a time where I didn't have this game, and I was still quite young. I think it's when this game actually first came out. And one of my mum's friends came and stayed with us for ages like a couple of weeks he's a really cool guy and he actually when he went home he brought us a present and it was jungle strike jungle strike for the super nintendo because we only had a super nintendo over my mum's house i had the mass uh, i had the mega drive and i remember uh, being so excited when he actually gave it to us oh fuel in there <laughs> cool that's actually really nice yeah I remember uh, I was so excited when he um, gave it to us but because I had extensively played this game on the Mega Drive I couldn't believe how different the Super Nintendo version was um, playing it there and it really isn't good it really is not good compared to um, the the master uh, the Mega Drive. It's f like the way your fuel runs down was slightly faster, fast enough, uh, faster enough to notice anyway. But the game ran significantly slower. Oh, that's so chilling. Oof. Right, we now have a radioactive uh, chunk inside us. So that is mission complete. No fanfare, nothing, just done. Yeah, so, um, and also the music and the sound in the game was way off. It, it wasn't really close from what I can remember. Because this game just sounds awesome. Um, whereas on the Super Nintendo, oof. But there's lots of comparisons uh, on YouTube of the two versions, and yeah, there is a lot of difference. Back when, you know, um, different consoles had wildly different capabilities, not like today. I mean, the, the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 are basically the same console it's just uh, if you look at the Pro and the Xbox One X you've got a choice do you buy the Pro which is less powerful but has um, what are those things called uh, games yes yes the PlayStation has games whereas the Xbox uh, Series X uh, oh hate the naming for the consoles it's so stupid um, the Xbox One X uh, is more powerful but it doesn't really have any of its own games not really now I love my Xbox um, I love my Xbox One X I love it because I love the backwards compatibility uh, I love Game Pass but essentially they're very similar systems but of course, back when the Mega Drive was out, and I am going to save state it here, back when the Mega Drive came out, um, save state. There we go. Yes. Back when the Mega Drive came out, um, they were very different to the Super Nintendo. You had very different games. So look at things like Aladdin. Um, Aladdin. Okay, came out for both the Mega Drive and the Super Nintendo, but they were both very different games because the machines were, had very different capabilities. And it was fun back then, you know, when, uh, you know, you could buy the same game twice and have two very different games. Hmm.
And I kind of get that feeling, uh, this feeling with the PlayStation 5 as well and the Xbox Series X. It's just going to be like, the Series X is going to be more powerful and hopefully have some games this time. And the PlayStation 5 is going to be less powerful. But apart from a couple of exclusives, they're exactly the same machine, really. <sighs> it's frustrating that we have to buy two different consoles. Wish we could just buy one console and it would play all the games, but hey, that's a debate for another time. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed it. And as always, till next time.